Good morning, folks. It is Friday morning again, and we're going to come and read together from Acts chapter 25, the continuing story of Paul and his um, imprisonment for trial. Let's read Acts 25 together. Three days after Festus arrived in Caesarea, to take over his new responsibilities, he left for Jerusalem, where the leading priests and other Jewish leaders met with him and made their accusations against Paul. They asked Festus as a favour to transfer Paul to Jerusalem, planning to ambush and kill him on the way. But Festus replied that Paul was at Caesarea and he himself would be returning there soon. So he said, those of you in authority can return with me. If Paul has done anything wrong, you can make your accusations. About eight or ten days later, Festus returned to Caesarea, and on the following day, he took his seat in court and ordered that Paul be brought in. When Paul arrived, the Jewish leaders from Jerusalem gathered around and made many more serious accusations they couldn't prove. Paul denied the charges. I am not guilty of any crime against the Jewish law or the temple or the Roman government, he said. Then Festus, wanting to please the Jews, asked him, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial before me? Paul replied, No. This is the official Roman court, so I ought to be tried right here. You know very well I am not guilty of harming the Jews. If, you ha if I have done something wrong, worthy, worthy of death, I don't refuse to die. But if I am innocent, no one has the right to turn me over to these men to kill me. I appeal to Caesar. Festus conferred with his advisers and then replied, Very well, you have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you will go. A few days later, King Agrippa arrived with his sister Bernice to pay their respects to Festus. During their stay of several days, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. There is a prisoner here, he told him, whose case was left to me by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the leading priests and Jewish elders pressed charges against him and asked me to condemn him. I pointed out to them that Roman law does not convict people without a trial. They must be given an opportunity to confront their accusers and defend themselves. When his accusers came here for the trial, I didn't delay. I called the case the very next day and ordered Paul be brought in. But the accusations made against him weren't any of the crimes I expected. Instead, it was something about their religion and a dead man named Jesus, who Paul insists is alive. I was at a loss to know how to investigate these things. So I asked him whether he'd be willing to stand trial on these charges in Jerusalem. But Paul appealed to have his case decided by the emperor. So I ordered that he be held in custody until I could arrange to send him to Caesar. I'd like to hear the man myself, Agrippa said. And Festus said, you will tomorrow. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice arrived at the auditorium with great pomp, accompanied by military officers and prominent men of the city. Festus ordered that Paul be brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are here, this is the man whose death is demanded by all the Jews both here and in Jerusalem. But in my opinion, he has done nothing deserving death. However, since he appealed his case to the emperor, I have decided to send him to Rome. But what shall I write to the emperor? For there is no clear charge against him. So I have brought him before all of you, and especially you, King Agrippa, so that after we examine him, we might have something to write. For it makes no sense to send a prisoner to the emperor without specifying the charges against him. Amen. You can see from that that Paul continues to face a lot of opposition. It's not easy um, for him at this time. The Jews and the Jewish leaders are continuing to want rid of him because they feel that he is trying to pervert their religion. He's trying to turn the people against him. For so long they have been in a position of power, a position which they have lorded over the people. Um, there's been a corrupt system in place for a long time. Just, just look at the temple, look at what Jesus did when he threw the money changers out, how the leaders allowed things to happen because it lined their pockets. And now Paul and what he's teaching is challenging all of that 
um, and rightly so. He's trying to get people to view the Old Testament scriptures with fresh eyes, to see exactly what they're saying, to be able to, to tell people, look, this is the truth. This is what it's all about. Sound familiar from today? There's so many things these days which people take and they twist to their own ends. We, we fit God's word around us to sit us rather than seeing what God's word says to us and teaches us and where it challenges us. We face that challenge quite often of taking a passage and trying to read it with fresh eyes, a fresh approach. Because we come with so much baggage. We come with so much that we've been told over the years and, and yeah, maybe we just accept that. But the challenge for each of us is to examine God's words and to see exactly what it's saying to us. Now that might affirm what we believe, it might affirm what we've been taught because it's been right. But likewise it might challenge what we've been taught because what we've been taught maybe is not quite true. And then we have to try and get our heads around that. The Jewish leaders couldn't, they didn't want to. They didn't want to lose that control and power. What about us? Are we prepared to rethink? Are we prepared to re-examine? Are we prepared to let God's word speak for itself rather than us impose our view upon it to shape it and mould it? Because God says that he is the potter and we are the clay. He wants to shape us. We don't shape God. How are you being shaped at this time? How is God changing you um, into something, someone different? Can you see where rough parts are being smoothed out? Can you see where other things are being added in? Can you see God moulding you? That's what he wants to do. Let him. Allow him. Allow yourself to be the clay in his hands and see what he does with you. You will be amazed. We have a great and a wonderful God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word today. Thank you again for the challenges that it brings to us, the teaching that it brings to us. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you that we can do this so freely, where we can read your word and, and broadcast it out so others can hear it as well. And we pray that your, your word would be heard by many uh, and that it would challenge many and change many lives. Lord, thank you that you are indeed the potter and that we are the clay. Father, just please mould us and shape us into the people that you want us to be so that you can use us in your plan for your glory and for your honour. Lord, this weekend, continue to look after us and bless us and help us, we pray. Keep us all safe. In Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining with me this morning. It's been lovely to have you along. Lovely to see the names on the screen again, as always. Trust that you would know a, a peaceful end. Just remember tomorrow, again Saturday, I'll not be streaming on Saturday, but we'll be back again on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for our service. Um, if you happen to know of any birthdays that are coming up, uh, please drop me a little message and let me know. It makes life a little bit easier for Sunday morning if I know in advance. Uh, but please tune in as we go back again into Ephesians into chapter 6 uh, and looking at the armour of God, trying to challenge it in a different way. So take care, God bless, see you all soon.